family head Teo acknowledged Knox's presence at the dinner and suggested that since everyone was gathered, they should proceed with the meal. During the dinner, Knox observed Hartz and Alan engaged in a discussion. Hartz proposed to their father, Teo, that it was time to decide the next person to enter Eldian Academy. Teo considered the suggestion and agreed that it was indeed the appropriate time to make that decision. Eldian Academy held great importance within the game Inner Lunatic, serving as the place where pupils faced various challenges and fought demons, forming the main storyline. Knox realized that attending the academy was crucial for him. It would allow him to gather his own allies while following the overall structure of the story. However, family head Teo clarified that Eldian Academy only permitted three individuals from each family to attend. This limitation aimed to restrict the influence of the nobles. Teo mentioned that he had already used two slots for his first and second sons, leaving the Rainhafer family with just one more entrance ticket available for the academy. Knox listened to the family head's announcement and contemplated the importance of obtaining the remaining entrance ticket to Eldian Academy. He understood that he needed to do whatever it took to secure that ticket before he could focus on forming alliances. Knox spoke up and concluded that the family head was proposing a fight between the brothers. This took the family head by surprise, as he hadn't expected Knox to be the first to react. Confirming Knox's assumption, the family head declared that a duel would take place in the practice hall one month from now to determine the next attendee. The duel would follow their family traditions for such decisions. Hartz took the opportunity to mock Knox, urging him to stay quiet to avoid embarrassing himself. Alan joined in, belittling Knox and stating that someone like him, who had never wielded a sword, stood no chance against them. Knox calmly took a sip of his wine and responded to Alan's taunts, stating that they could discuss it after he emerged victorious. Alan expressed disbelief in Knox's abilities, but Knox remained focused. He understood that the upcoming duel was another trial he needed to face in order to secure the entrance ticket. He refused to be swayed by the taunts and insults directed at him. Confident in his own abilities, Knox looked ahead and boldly declared that he would be the one to attend Eldian Academy. This surprised the family head and further infuriated Hartz and Alan. Talia, the young lady from the still and her family, chuckled at Knox's declaration and commented on his confidence. Knox glanced at her but internally felt a sense of unease, realizing that he might have drawn the attention of someone he shouldn't have. Inside the family head's office, Teo acknowledged that something had indeed changed about Knox, as reported by the head butler. Teo pondered the cause of this change, wondering if Knox had been possessed by a demon. Regardless, he acknowledged that Knox had captured his attention. Teo instructed the head butler, Rodwell, to continue keeping a close eye on Knox. The family head was curious about the transformation in Knox and wanted to understand the reasons behind it. Meanwhile, Knox was running at the practice hall, sweating and panting heavily. Observing the scene, one of the maids commented on his frequent visits to the practice hall. Another maid mentioned the upcoming duel in one month, sparking curiosity among them about Knox's sudden dedication to physical training. Knox overheard their conversation, wondering why he was able to pick out their words so clearly and questioning if he had a special trait. At that moment, he received a system message indicating a slight increase in his stamina stat. Knox expressed disappointment at the small increment and reflected on the significance of stamina for him. He recognized that his low stamina was his greatest obstacle and a hindrance to unlocking his full potential with the trait swordsmanship and combat genius. Knox understood that the requirement to utilize the trait was to have his stamina stat reach for. However, due to the curse of the week, it had taken him a month to increase his stamina by only 1.9 points. Knox felt frustrated with the curse of the week, a trait that reduced his growth rate by half. Despite putting in a lot of effort, he had only managed to increase his stamina by a small amount and the terminal illness trait further hindered his progress. Knox realized that he needed to exert four times as much effort compared to others just to see minimal improvements. The difficulty of his situation weighed heavily on him. However, Knox decided to set aside those concerns for the time being. Just then, Roan arrived, pushing a moving tray filled with the materials Knox had requested the previous day. Knox acknowledged her arrival, realizing that she was faster than he had anticipated. With the supplies now available, he felt confident about making progress. Contemplating how to reach a stamina level of 4, Knox reassured himself that there were no issues. He believed that his knowledge would allow him to overcome any obstacles. Curious about the purpose of the materials, Rona questioned why Knox needed them, expressing concern about their dangerous nature and their expensive cost. 
she pointed out that the scroll seemed to be the only useful item among them. Nox simply replied that people didn't know how to use those materials effectively, implying that their usefulness was hidden from others. As Rona looked at him with a questioning expression, Nox picked up a bottle of elixir and drank it in one go. Panicking, Rona shouted that it was poison. Sweat covered Nox's face as he acknowledged the potency of the poison. A system notification appeared, indicating that Nox had consumed the poison of the three-headed gorgon and his health would temporarily increase by 1.5 times. It also informed him that his death counter had started, with 9 minutes and 59 seconds remaining until death. As Rona grew increasingly panicked, she exclaimed that she would call the head butler for assistance. However, Nox urged her to wait and proceeded to eat the core, ignoring her pleas. Rona's worry intensified as she exclaimed that the core was not meant for consumption. A system notification appeared, indicating that Nox had consumed the core of the golem and would slowly be petrified as a result. Another notification followed, stating that a hidden piece had been activated and that the poison of the three-headed gorgon was reacting with the golem's core. Nox was pleased with the results and thought that his plan was working perfectly. The golem's core was originally used to petrify people or increase their defense quickly, or to create artificial golems. However, when combined with the three-headed gorgon poison, it had a special effect. Notifications continued to appear, indicating that a special effect had been activated and the poison of the three-headed gorgon had been diluted, causing the negative trait curse of the weak to disappear. Nox was ecstatic, as the curse that had plagued him was now gone. However, Rona, with tears in her eyes, looked at Nox and expressed her concern, fearing that he might soon die. Ignoring her worries, Nox suddenly began to unbutton his shirt, causing Rona to cover her eyes in embarrassment and exclaim in shock. After unbuttoning his shirt further, Nox poured an elixir bottle onto his head, prompting a series of notifications to appear. The dew of the remembering fairy countered the petrification effects of the golem's core, and a hidden piece was activated. Nox felt a surge of satisfaction as his plan unfolded precisely as intended. The notification informed him that the blessing of growth, a temporary trait, was granted through the interaction of the dew and the golem's core. This blessing would double his stat growth until his stamina reached five. Left with only the scroll, Nox picked it up and activated the rapid stamina growth scroll with another notification confirming his action. This scroll would double his stamina growth rate. As Nox contemplated the results, he realized that he had successfully eliminated the curse and with the blessing of growth mitigating the debuffs from the terminally ill trait, coupled with the effects of the scroll, his current growth rate should be twice that of most people. This meant he should be able to increase his stamina stat at a much faster pace. Suddenly, Rona leaped onto Nox, causing him to momentarily lose his balance. Concern filled her teary eyes as she questioned his well-being. Nox, slightly annoyed at her interruption, initially demanded a towel but softened when he saw her distress. With a reassuring smile, he assured Rona that he was fine. She continued to worry, suggesting he should rest and consider calling the head butler for assistance. Nox, once again, reassured her, insisting that he was alright. Curious about his next course of action, Rona inquired about his plans. Nox simply replied with a single word, run. In that moment, Nox and Rona sprinted through the practice hall, their actions capturing the attention of Talia, who stood nearby, observing them. Talia, who had been closely observing Nox, couldn't comprehend why someone as seemingly weak as him would accept the match against his brothers. Her maid, Emma, tried to caution Talia against staring at Nox and reminded her of proper etiquette. However, Talia interrupted Emma, expressing her frustration and disbelief at Nox's lack of sword skills and refusal to accept help from the other knights of Rainhafer. Talia couldn't shake off her annoyance, though she couldn't fully understand why she was so bothered by Nox's situation when she believed he would simply end up getting beaten up within a month. Despite her thoughts, Talia's annoyance persisted. Determined to address the matter, Talia walked towards the practice hall, informing her maid, Emma, that she would be right back. Approaching Knox as he rested, Talia introduced herself, stating her name. Knox was taken by surprise at her approach and wondered why she had sought him out. He asked her what she wanted, noting that he had heard her name before. Talia, feeling somewhat flustered by Knox's cold attitude, thought to herself that he must have been taken aback by her beauty. She confronted Knox, questioning his confidence in being able to defeat his brothers and asked if that was the reason why he had accepted the match. She further inquired whether he truly believed that he could defeat his brother by simply running away like this. 
Talia went on to offer her assistance, expressing her willingness to help him. However, Knox calmly rejected her offer, telling her to get lost and showing no interest in her help. Talia was taken aback by Knox's response and exclaimed in disbelief, expressing her indignation at being treated this way when she was offering her support. On the sidelines, Rona observed the exchange and thought that if Knox continued to speak in such a manner, it would make girls dislike him. Unwilling to persuade Knox any further, Talia turned to walk away from the practice hall, clearly upset with his refusal and dismissive attitude. Knox, using his insight ability on Talia, gained access to her stat window, allowing him to learn more about her abilities and traits. He observed that Talia possessed impressive stats, particularly in terms of stamina, which surpassed that of most grown males. While her potential may not match that of the three sword masters or the four great mages on the continent, Knox recognized that she had the potential to reach their level and effectively combat demons with her fire attribute magic. Knox also knew that in the near future, Talia's fire attribute magic would awaken to white flames and be used to burn the demonized version of himself. Understanding the significance of making Talia his ally at this point, as it would drastically alter the future events of the story, Knox pondered how to navigate the original story while avoiding his own demise. He questioned whether it was possible to maintain a good relationship with someone who would eventually be responsible for his death. One month later, Talia walked through the hallway, reflecting on the praise she had received for her quick learning abilities and the expectations tied to the Stillrainer family's talent. However, she couldn't help but feel inferior compared to her sister's exceptional talent. Talia questioned her own potential and wondered if she could ever become a knight. Reminding herself of the qualities and principles a knight must possess, she contemplated the path she needed to follow. Knights should never be consumed by greed maintain a frugal lifestyle, and be willing to sacrifice themselves for the greater good. In addition, they must master the art of swordsmanship and adhere to proper form to become true knights. Talia pondered the possibility of Knox being able to defeat his brothers, who had trained for years, solely by focusing on cardio exercises. She expressed her doubt, believing it to be unlikely for him to succeed. The next day arrived and Knox and Alan stood in the center of the ring, surrounded by a crowd of spectators eagerly awaiting the official duel that would determine who would earn the right to enter Eldian Academy. Thistila, the first wife of the family head, was also present at the scene. Meanwhile, the head butler, standing nearby, overheard the family head calling out to him. The family head inquired about the butler's thoughts on the outcome of the duel. After considering young Master Alan's past performances, the head butler stated that it was highly likely that Alan would emerge victorious. The family head agreed, assuming the same outcome. However, the head butler couldn't help but wonder if the family head had different expectations. Having once walked the path of a knight alongside the family head, the butler understood that the art of the blade could be intricate or straightforward. The level of skill and dedication determined one's proficiency. There was only one way to surpass someone previously ahead and force them to kneel, the insurmountable wall of overwhelming talent. The butler pondered whether young Master Knox possessed such innate talent. Interrupting the butler's thoughts, the family head spoke, acknowledging that the possibility might not be zero and that the youngest, born with Rainhafer blood, might possess the talent of a sword emperor. As Knox stood in the dual grounds, he received a notification indicating that his trait, swordsmanship and combat genius, was inactive. Frustration washed over him as he contemplated his seemingly unlucky streak and questioned whether his luck stat was actually negative. Despite his efforts, he couldn't reach a stamina stat of four. A few days earlier, while Knox was running, he received multiple notifications activating his trade effects and gradually increasing his stamina stat by 0.1. Now his stamina had reached 3.8. Rona, who ran alongside him, expressed her exhaustion and questioned whether she had to continue running with him. Knox, wiping sweat from his face, replied that it wouldn't be fun without her and jokingly mentioned who would take care of him if she didn't. Rona, with teary eyes, suspected that she heard him say something else. Knox then handed her a towel and assigned her another task, to which Rona responded with a pouting face. Playfully, Knox accused Rona of cursing him in her mind, but she denied it and accidentally bit her tongue in the process. Knox chuckled at the thought of Rona having good stamina and contemplated using his insight ability to view her stats. To his surprise, Rona's stamina stat was 4.5, surpassing his own despite his dedicated training. Knox was astonished by the strength of the Rainhafer family, where even a maid was stronger than an average man. Rona reminded Knox that it was already evening and suggested he rest before the duel. 
Knox, panting heavily, felt the pressure of time and thought that he didn't have enough time to increase his stamina. Back at the dual ring, Alan addressed Knox and proposed that he should give up. Despite Knox being considered the shame of their family, Alan expressed hesitation in beating him too severely. Knox responded, stating that Alan didn't seem to want him to give up. Alan shifted his attention to Talia, the daughter of the Stillrainer family, and expressed his desire to impress her. He believed that Knox would assist him in achieving that goal. However, Knox expressed uncertainty about whether it was a wise decision. Observing Alan's stamina stat of 8, Knox realized that he couldn't defeat him using ordinary methods and contemplated alternative approaches. As the referee announced the duel between Knox and Alan for the admission ticket to Eldian Academy, he emphasized that both of them must accept whatever the results may be and that objections would not be tolerated. Knox felt nervous, realizing that everything hinged on this duel. His main objective was to find his memories and discover the sender of the letter, as he knew that after the one-year grace period, his life would be in danger. The referee asked one last time if both of them were ready, and then he announced the beginning of the duel. Alan initiated the attack with a swift sword strike, aiming to strike Knox, but with agile dexterity, Knox evaded the blow by gracefully sidestepping. Reacting swiftly, Alan followed up with a forceful kick, intending to overpower Knox. However, Knox skillfully blocked the kick with his sword, although the impact still pushed him backward. Impressed by Knox's deft defense, Alan acknowledged his opponent's skill, and the duel pressed on, with Alan relentless in his assault, leaving Knox on the defensive. Amidst the intense clash, Knox recognized the consistent rule of the damned inner lunatic game, surrendering everything upon defeat, but regaining control over his destiny upon victory. Suddenly, a notification appeared, indicating an incremental increase of 0.1 in Knox's stamina stat. A smile adorned Knox's face as he witnessed this development, realizing that triumph in the duel held the potential to grant him all he desired. Observing Knox's smile, Alan jokingly questioned if he had struck Knox's head one too many times, determined to continue his relentless attacks in hopes of pacifying his opponent. Meanwhile, Fissila, Alan's mother, attentively observed the fight, confident that her son would be the final child of the family to gain entry into Eldian Academy. In the midst of the duel, Alan launched a ferocious attack, nearly causing Knox to lose his balance. It was at that moment that Fissila overheard a disapproving comment, diverting her attention to its source, the family head. His countenance betrayed disappointment, as he had eagerly anticipated witnessing Knox's transformation, only to find his current performance underwhelming. Inwardly, Fissila harbored aspirations for the day when the true extent of her power would be revealed to the family. Expressing his disappointment, the family head voiced his expectations, comparing the talents of Alan and Hearts to his firstborn son, Garen, finding them lacking. Memories of his past prowess, dominating opponents with overwhelming power while wielding the dark sword of domination, filled his mind. Contemplating who would ultimately inherit that formidable weapon, the family head resolved to bring an end to the duel, rising from his seat with determination. On the duel ring, Knox received a message notifying him of an incremental increase of 0.1 in his stamina, swiftly followed by the activation of his innate trait, swordsmanship and combat genius. Overwhelmed with excitement, Knox burst into laughter, catching both Alan and the family head off guard. Knox then employed a skill, triggering a system message that confirmed the activation of the skill Hour of the Genius. Knox's thoughts raced as he recollected a saying that distinguished geniuses and the talented, each having their own unique time. In that moment, he believed that it was his time, a moment of genius. With the skill now active, Knox perceived the world around him decelerating, as if time itself had slowed. This bestowed upon him a distinct advantage in the duel, while his adversary's movements appeared sluggish, his own actions quickened, enabling him to react swiftly and execute precise maneuvers. Fully utilizing this skill proved challenging, but with his innate trait, swordsmanship and combat genius, now activated, Knox wielded the skill with finesse. Seizing the opportunity, Knox unleashed a formidable assault against Alan, his strike powerful and unyielding. The force of the blow caused Alan's sword to be dislodged from his grip, leaving him defenseless. With victory within sight, Knox's determination intensified, firmly believing that he would emerge triumphant in the duel.